Hello and welcome to the Listening Post's unboxing channel on YouTube. Today I'm unboxing Macintosh's uh, MA7900 200 watt integrated amplifier. Now while this isn't a new model, it's wonderful to get an opportunity to share it being opened with you today because I'm so proud of Macintosh and it's wonderful to have uh, an opportunity to have a good look at this product, uh, perhaps in a way that most may not. Okay, so with all Macintosh products, they are delivered in these massive boxes. Um, any amplifier is double boxed to ensure that we have the best as far as protection and freight. So you end up with something very big. Uh, it's factory taped at the, at the top, we'll have a look at that later. Um, and stapled, stapled closed at the bottom. This thing is huge and of course the cardboard and other things add up to uh, uh, an interesting sort of weight to try and deal with. So if you see me mopping some sweat off my brow after I've finished this, you will know why. Okay, so looking at the box for a moment. Uh, MA50, uh, sorry, 2900. Uh, we've got information about the product on all four corners. There's model and serial number on that little white sticker. Uh, and it is closed with Macintosh's factory tape. Um, opening that tape is really, really easy. The process is very straightforward as far as running a craft knife down it. And then, um, then across the top. Once we sort of open these top sections, we get an opportunity to see the, the, the box inside and the way that the care that they use to ensure that this is suspended within some closed cell foam. And the packaging starts to evolve. Right, now, getting anything as big as heavy as this out of a box, the first thing we're actually going to do is roll it forward slightly and then take the box off the product, not the product out of the box. And lifting it onto one end enables us to get rid of the foam and start looking at the product like it would do once we've got it out of the box. Okay, so the center box, the top is uh, a single label for its model and serial number. Uh, it is closed with a single piece of tape along one end and opening that is very very straightforward. Now at this point it gets a lot more fun. We've got a flap that opens and we start to have a look at the elaborate packaging that, that Macintosh do. This thing is layered in very, very well thought out pieces of packaging. For example, this piece of cardboard fills perfectly the top of the box and you'll see uh, a cutaway or a fold as part of it to enable it to f fit perfectly across the slightly higher front section. It's beautifully protected and simple things like that have been well thought out. Drilling down for a moment, we've got Macintosh's manual. There's heaps of pages that goes into all sorts of details as far as how this product uh, can be utilised and how to set it up. We've got um, Macintosh's IEC power cable. This is a New Zealand power cable. It's a good sturdy size, good weight. We've got um, Macintosh's uh, key. Now this is used to tighten the binding posts, uh, enabling it to be going past the finger tight. Also, when you finish with it, it makes a great keychain. Last thing is um, Macintosh's remote control. This is separately packaged and uh, bubble bag. the bubble bag is taped closed. The remotes are now sort of these little skinny remotes, a little bit lightweight, lovely and easy to use and will actually operate many of the functions of uh, other Macintosh devices. The last little piece in here, of course, is the, is the batteries for that remote control. Okay, now, this is actually the hard bit. 
Macintosh's amplifiers are so heavy that packaging them and taking them out of the packaging is quite an interesting experience. You'll see that I'm sliding this along so that we can actually get it out of its box and away from its sort of side. Right. So from this point, we get to firstly see the physical element of this amp. It's very deep. Uh, it's obviously very, very heavy. And as I tilt this over very carefully, you'll see that it's actually um, held in place uh, with two big screws to uh, an elaborate amount of packaging. There's about a 5 million DF and then layers of cardboard. So we'll carefully sort of roll that over. I'm going to grab a drill to get these things open. So this is a big long screw and a big washer uh, and obviously very well thought out as far as its position inside the amplifier to ensure that uh, it locks or keys in perfectly. Okay. So first thing we slide away is that 5mm MDF. It's already pre-screwed for obviously the points it needs. And we've got the cardboard. Now, there's holes here that line beautifully up with the uh, amplifier's feet. There's four feet and four holes associated with that, and then two more associated specifically with the screws that I've just removed. that all sort of puck in there to make sure it can't be over-tightened, and it's going to lock beautifully into the two holes. Okay. Get rid of that. And if I just tilt it up for a, for a wee second, we'll have a look at the holes that those screws actually came out of, very specific to locking that into its packaging to ensure that it is not going to move and it's not going to have any damage in transit. Okay. So up onto its edge, at this point the bag is very very easy to open. Some simple little nicks of the uh, sellotape enable us, us to be able to access this sort of oversized bag and get it off the product. Again being very heavy um, we're going to sort of have to pause and roll it around a little bit. Okay. And taking that bag off, you get to see just how beautiful this product is. We'll pause for a moment. We've got that uh, silica bag and a little soft um, cloth bag to ensure that it cannot scratch the product, but still does its job. Okay, so let's have a wee look at this product. Firstly, again, I hope you understand how heavy this thing is. At a couple of hundred watts a channel, with the auto former and input voltage transformers on board, this thing is very, very heavy. Tilting it forward, you'll see it's quite deep. This uh, auto former uh, output transformers, um, power transformer, front display and pre-amplification stage at the front, and then in the amplification at the back. Uh, looking around at its side, again you'll see its depth and the elaborate heat sinks that the unit has. Spinning it around again and looking at the back, you'll see how well appointed it is and some of the unique features that Macintosh deliver for this price. Firstly, being an auto former output transformer, it's got multiple output taps or binding posts. You've got a common at the bottom and then two, four or eight ohm outputs to ensure that it's delivering the 200 watts that's rated to, to any load that you might have. Working across the section, we've got um, the digital coax optical digital inputs and a USB. It's an asynchronous USB and the DACs on board are excellent. Further, this section is related to control. So uh, 3.5 mil mono and stereo sockets are used for uh, data, so um, the ability for one remote control to operate other devices. Um, you've got uh, 12 volt triggers useful for uh, turning on and off power amplifiers and other connected devices, even CD players. And even RS-232 for the use of uh, control solutions you may have in your home. Of course over this side is the left output and again the multiple taps 2, 4 and 8 ohm. The bottom section is sort of a chassis within a chassis and this is the pre-amplification stage that I alluded to. Um, on this far side we've got the IEC input and fuse and then we've got a couple of outputs enabling this to be connected to other devices. 
a record out, um, a, a pre out, and then those classic Macintosh bridging clips allowing the amplifier to be used even as a preamp if required. You've got a couple of labelled inputs, although you could almost ignore those labels. One of them implies server, DVD, CD, that type of thing. And please hang around for some photographs or I'll take some close-ups of these so you can see how well appointed it is. Um, the reason I sort of say these labels are somewhat irrelevant is that you're able to change their, um, uh, their name and other setups at the front and enable them to be utilised for whatever you might wish. There's one marked auxiliary tuner and then of course most importantly a moving coil and moving magnet phono stage with a really good quality binding post for the earth. There's a single balanced input and again that's allocatable to any of the inputs you may choose. Okay, so I'm going to spin this round and have a look at the front. Lifting it up, oh, you get again the sense of this weight. Starting from this side, uh, we're looking at the main power or standby on and off. As soon as the power cord is plugged in, this standby light glows and it changes colour to a green when it uh, is on. Pushing and holding this will actually factory reset the unit. So if you get a little bit lost, perhaps, where you end up with, um, oh, I don't know, you mislabel something or you really just want to start afresh, you can push and hold and reset the unit. You've got a basic mute and then uh, a push button for the equaliser setting. This unit is appointed with a five channel graphic equaliser and the ability to just sort of tweak the, the top end of things if required. Um, EQ bypass turns on and off these, enabling you to eliminate uh, the circuit if required. Across the front you've got a two, um, a two line dot matrix display, enabling quite a lot of information to actually be there, obviously classically volume and other things. And again, hang around, I'll take some photos so you get a good look and feel. You've got two sets of outputs here, and these are switchable. Output one being the main uh, pre in and out, which we saw the bridging clips at the back. And the second one is switchable to uh, allow for power amplification if you choose to connect it. The last socket there is actually a headphone. Now, don't, uh, don't discount the quality of the headphone output on this product. It's actually extremely good. Uh, like any Macintosh piece, any connection, any input, any output has been very deliberately thought out. And if the feature is there, they will do a very good job of it. Above the headphone socket is the main input selector. Uh, now this actually serves some dual purposes. You can see that it moves in and out. You can actually push and hold it and use that to go into the amplifier's setup. And this, along with the volume, enables you to change any manner of different things associated with the inputs and outputs. You can trim, uh, trim the photo stage, you can change the labels, all sorts of things that you may require. It's a simple alphanumeric thing and it's very straightforward. You can even turn off unused inputs, enabling the very low noise floor of this amplifier to even be lowered again. Um, okay, obviously five channel graphic equaliser and over this side the volume control. That's um, a rotary encoder. Across the front are Macintosh's iconic VU meters. Very, very accurate and in this model they are illuminated with um, uh, fibre optics to ensure that the, uh, the light is very uh, even across them, very natural looking. Again Macintosh's logo, iconic of course, and all of this is screen printed on the underside of the glass, enabling you know, no wear and tear, no matter how many times you might bump this, um, a simple wipe with a cloth returns it to, to, to new. You're not going to be able to rub off any of these things and inadvertently end up with something uh, you know, inoperable because you've lost what the button might have done. Okay, so there we go. This beautiful 200 watt integrated amplifier. Um, wonderful to see it here in Christchurch, New Zealand. Wonderful to be able to share its unboxing with you today. Macintosh's MA7900 integrated amplifier unboxed here at the Listening Post in Christchurch. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.